Manhattan in a in a town that is uh, somehow coming back to life. The streets are full. On the other hand, everybody's very, very nervous. And uh, um, it's, it feels like a little interruption in a civil war where you say, can I go out on the streets or not? Or will I get shot? Uh, and uh, um, we are very concerned, of course, of, of the new um, uh, viruses that are coming around. And it puts everything again in question. This fall, as you all know, we focus on writers on thinkers of theater who have used the time of corona to um, uh, put things into word to put it into a form publish it getting it out and um, today we have um, uh, a very very significant talk um, i feel we have with us two guests from uh, europe and it is um, um, avra who um, uh, comes uh, here uh, with her book staging 21st century tragedies theater politics and global crisis. And she comes with Frank here uh, from who's based at the Humboldt University um, who contributed one chapter, but a very significant one and one that really asks us to question everything and to realize the moment we are in, uh, mankind is in, planet Earth is in because he very strongly feels as so many others, uh, something is shifting, is changing, we are entering um, a new age. Very few words um, about uh, my uh, two friends, but first of all, guys, where are you? What time is it? Uh, where are you now? How are you doing? Avra. Well, I am actually in uh, Nicosia in Cyprus and it's 7 p.m. And I'm wow, Berlin. Frank? Yeah, Berlin and we have 6 o'clock p.m. 6 o'clock. Well, it's evening time there and Perhaps they are a little bit ahead of us and uh, looking at this book uh, that Avra put together with 20 collaborators. She collected essays and uh, also apply, uh, actually here from New York, um, from um, um, Cara Melpied and, and thinkers. It's quite uh, significant and perhaps it's closer to the future than to the in the present and no longer in a way in a in a past that they claim and both say, you know, perhaps um, something um, is behind us and we have to, to face it. Avra uh, Siri Sidiopoulou is the Associate Professor of Theatre at the Open University of Cyprus. And she's also the Artistic Director. She is a director also um, um, of uh, the Athens based Persona Theatre Company. And she is the author of Directors, Directions for Directing Theatre and Method and Authoring Performance the director in contemporary theater. This also is um, of significance. Both of them are think thinkers. Uh, they write theory, but they also work professionally in the theater and uh, produce, create, and put plays uh, together. Frank Radatz um, is a German publicist and dramaturg. Um, he wrote about uh, the great Hannah Müller as his dissertation and uh, published on aesthetics and drama theory. He was the editor of the very important Theater der Zeit Verlag, uh, the publishing house uh, in Berlin. He worked for Lettre Internationale, perhaps one of the leading, some even claim the leading intellectual magazine that only exists actually in print. And um, he has taught at many universities. And right now he is the Humboldt University where he created uh, together with uh, Antje Boetius and Sabine Kunst. And we come to that later, the theater of the Anthropocene a center dedicated to the research of men and nature, somehow in relation to the very great Alexander Humboldt. Both of you, thank you for being here. And um, how, how does it feel? How are things going in, um, in, in, in Greece and in Berlin at the moment? Well, if I may start, well, first of all, thank you so much for having us here today. It is amazing to be part of the Seagull Talks. This is the third time that I'm joining this very uh, reputable and meaningful series of uh, talks where people actually share their insights about this ongoing pandemic, but not just the pandemic, about theatre and how it feels um, to be placed in a world that is surrounded by crisis. And it is a very um, uh, important thing for me today to be able to present this book on crisis, which I think uh, on a personal level, kind of uh, um, helped me uh, survive the coronavirus pandemic. Things are a little better uh, or were a little better until very recently in Greece um, and Cyprus. 
uh, and theaters have been fully operational, which is amazing. Nobody knows what's going to happen from now on with the new variant circulating all over the world. Um, and when this really huge uh, crisis uh, of health is going to finally abate. But we'll see. Yeah. We're hopeful. We'll see. Mm. How is it in Berlin, Frank? How does it feel? What's the theater doing? The theater is um, waiting for the next shutdown. And because everybody is waiting for Omicron variant, and but we have a new government that's very important. There's a Green Party in this government. There will be some changes in uh, environmental um, politics. And um, I think this is a sign that there is a big shift in connection with this um, Anthropocene and it's just starting and this will be a very long debate. This is not only a question that we stop um, with uh, gasoline cars or so on, something like this, because what is in the air today will be there in 120 years. So we have, are in a process which is about for many or for, for some generations and uh, perhaps needs 200, 300 years and this is a big challenge. And I think um, behind all these discussions on the surface, there is a fear which is connected because everybody knows in the world now that there is something um, dangerous uh, with this ecological uh, threat and horizons. Yeah, yeah, it is a real a moment of change of terror. And uh, I feel that all our talks, I feel, are significant and important. This one, again, I think, is one of these theoretical talks we had with uh, Milo Rao or Florian Maltzak or Carol Martin, Thomas Oberander, Friederik Aitui. Um, and, uh, and the question really is, in this new age, uh, in this new planetary age, Frank, as you call it, the age of the Anthropocene, how do we do theater? How do we react? What makes sense? in this age that we are entering. Um, we are realizing that uh, our species is not only part of a historical process, as you write, but also part of the history of planet Earth. The planet does not lead us humans, and, uh, and, uh, but we do need the non-human life, the plants, the animals, and with Latour and others, you say, you know, we have to change our perspective. National borders, you know, uh, don't mean anything in the face of corona. Um, we are in a, in, a, in a new age. And Avra's work, uh, where she said, let me use the time to ask my friends and collaborate with people I admire to collect essays, uh, to saying, how do we stage this crisis? She calls it a theater of crisis. She's a crisis theorist, you know, if we, if we say it right. Um, um, how can uh, we look from different viewpoints and, and create an analysis of a uh, performance uh, of dramaturgy, of scholarly work and uh, artistic work from different groups, different continents, but also different approaches. Um, what does it mean to stage? And is the theater of crisis, how is it connected to the attic, the ancient uh, uh, tragedy? So this is a very, very um, important theme. I think it's right in the middle of what we um, have to um, think about. So, um, Avram, maybe um, uh, uh, start with you. The term crisis, and you write about it. What does it mean? Well, it is a very uh, dangerous and slippery term, and uh, we have to be very, very careful how to use it. But it is essentially uh, a, a characteristic of the modern times. It is connected to conflict. It is connected to rupture. It is connected to change. And it forces us, in a sense, to, to look back to the past and interpret this past and look forward to the future and find a way to channel our responses to um, uh, what is happening uh, to us politically, socially, in a way that is uh, meaningful for uh, human beings and in a way that makes the world a better place. So there are um, there is a very long conversation on how crisis has also been um, appropriated by different um, 
political parties, by uh, all kinds of media formations uh, that use it to create a state of alarm um, that is not necessarily always warranted. But in a sense, crisis is something that gives us the opportunity to uh, assess the world we live in and create and try to produce paradigms of a better world. And this is what the book deals about uh, from the perspective of the performing arts and how theatre can become that lens that uh, evaluates the moment of time we're in um, and how we can use this moment of time and our perspective about it to think about our world, think about our planet and, and create choices for us and for the people um, around us and for communities that uh, can make life better. Mm -hmm. It's hard, you, you, to, you, it's you, hard to pin it down. To, it's... Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The entire book won't answer it. But um, also, you mentioned it. You said often people think tragedies seem dated. Uh, um, they seem obsolete. Uh, you re, you uh, are looking at it closely. What is your what is your answer? Well, tragedy has a a, a double. Uh, meaning it is it is both an ontological and a culture uh, an ontological phenomenon and a cultural and artistic phenomenon and uh, I think crisis theater the way I see uh, crisis theater today 21st century crisis theater is very much connected to uh, the idea of the tragic because we are going through tragic times crisis is uh, intertwined with tragedy but at the same time the theater of crisis actually has created forms that are very much akin to uh, what uh, Attic tragedy gave us in the sense of a chorus and a community of people um, uh, taking a stance. Uh, what I think may feel more obsolete about uh, the Attic form has to do more about how the plot is constructed, more or less the idea of a noble hero, um, uh, that uh, goes through a transformation, the idea that there is an explanation for what is happening to us, divine agency and so forth. Uh, we are really past that stage in the world we live in, but we can very much use the structures um, of the communal mm -hmm. um, uh, essence of Attic tragedy to inform uh, the theatre practices of the 21st century so that they become political again. Mm. Yeah, and it really, really does have a place, but we have to look at it carefully and redefine it. It's no longer enough to put on a white linen, or it never was, you know, a white linen sheet and say, I'm, a, I'm doing a Greek play. Um, we have to examine um, what it is about as, you know, Schreckner did with Dionysus in 69 and actually Frank uh, uh, is uh, asking us to reevaluate, to look again at the idea of the Dionysian. But Frank, before we come to that, um, if I understand right, with many, many others, say you say, we are in a radical moment of transformation on planet Earth, as societies and in our own personal lives. We are too close, perhaps, to really realize it. The Holocene, the idea of the, the mankind that from hunter-gatherer, you know, learn to with long spears, as you write about it, you know, to hunt in groups, imitated the predators they were afraid of and became this incredible uh, uh, species that invented the steam engine and the telephone and rockets. Um, but this idea of that Holocene is in a way now uh, coming to an end and we have to look at the world in a different way um, in the idea of that very new age of the Anthropocene that is entering us. Corona, in a way, points out uh, that we are in a global context, uh, in a global sphere. We have to uh, uh, live in it, understand it. And you say theater has an important part to play. So tell us about that center you created at Humboldt University. Actually, it was the president of the Humboldt University. Just imagine NYU or Columbia, the president creates a theater center and participates and together with a marine biologist. Um, so tell us, what is the theater of the Anthropocene? What's your idea? Okay. Um, 
I was working as a dramaturg at the Berliner Ensemble two years ago with Frank Kastorf and Jürgen Holt. And then I have um, talking with uh, about the responsibility of science uh, in a little way in, in the, with the Brechtian theater. Galilei, we have made Galilei. And uh, in this uh, moment, um, we are talking with this uh, marine biologist, um, Antje Boetius, uh, who is an Arctic uh, researcher. And she has uh, the dream that the theater can help her uh, because uh, she has the experience that her voice is not strong enough to uh, reach the people. And then this idea was to connect art, theater, and science uh, under this uh, premise of the Anthropocene. And in the following month and now two years, we make some uh, productions, theater productions about the forest, breaking for a forest. It's a montage principle, or another is called critters, like Donna Haraway is speaking about critters, about the animals in the soil. Or we have uh, now a, a pro project of scientists of three Berlin universities about the future of water in the area of Berlin. And we have to uh, create a artistic framework for this so that there is a collaboration now more usually uh, between natural science and theater. And this was five uh, or four or three years ago was not uh, thinkable. And the best or the climax was uh, we make this Alexander Eisenach at the, as a director at the Volksbühne, uh, the Oedipus tragedy, but we called it uh, Anthropos uh, Tyrann, uh, Oedipus. And then uh, Antje Boetze is going on stage and uh, she is a modern seer. She is reading the future of mankind from a bore, uh, ice bore uh, core. Yeah? Um, and of course you can see, okay, for 800 years ago, you know, 800 million, uh, 800,000 years ago, we have this and this conditions. And then <clears throat> the water is five uh, meters higher than uh, today. And so uh, she can make extrapolations and bring it to the future. So we have a, a very strong connection between old um, ancient um, idea of uh, interpreting the future and now this modern scientist in the same situation, they must uh, give us warnings because they, they have uh, simulation satellites and uh, can say, okay, this will be very bad development. Uh, so, and this mm -hmm. is for a new point of view and there are new combinations now. And uh, I never had thought that in my life, I want to bring scientists on stage, but it works and it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it works uh, so well, I think you got the Nestroy Prize. It's a very prestigious prize uh, in Europe of the best uh, uh, best production in German-speaking countries for your work, Anthropos, Tehran, Oedipus, oh, or work, a rework. Re nominated. Yeah, or was... you're nominated for it, but yeah, it's yeah. just, uh, that's a stunning achievement. Um, that's something coming out of a university in collaboration with a, you know, great established theater and a, a visionary director. Um, um, Avra, I don't know if you saw it, um, the, the, the Oedipus um, from Frank. No, unfortunately um, no. But you say um, something is changing in, in also in the idea of tragedy, if I understood right, that tragedy used it to be in Nietzsche's sense also that you see the human suffering on stage, all the mistakes we make, but ultimately it's life affirming mm -hmm. and you, you, you celebrate it. But you say actually um we in a perpetual state you know where we're repeating and don't seem to come out so that so that is tragedy giving us a contemporary tragedy is that is that a new message is there a new way to think about it Ooh, well um 
In a sense, I mean, yes, tragedy used to be life affirming and I'm not sure it can be that um, at this moment in, in time. But uh, uh, what we get from tragedy is the sense of uh, communal suffering. I think this is what 21st century tragedy is about, that it is not about the fate of one individual, but it is mostly about how it all comes together uh, in a world that is uh, um, relevant to all of us. So what happens to me is affecting the way that you live, is affecting the way that people uh, outside of our small circle of friends um, lives. It is all about uh, globalization and uh, communal suffering is the suffering of uh, the entire globe uh, at this moment in time. And I think this is where uh, tragedy and crisis intersect in that they uh, create uh, a, a structure where everything is in, and feels interconnected, that nothing can be uh, um, standing on its own anymore, that every uh, plight, every um, um, crisis, every conflict in the world will eventually get to you and me. Um, at the end, will not leave anybody unaffected. And it, it, it has become very, very clear with the COVID pandemic, when at the beginning uh, of it all, we thought it was mainly, you know, isolated in a part of the world that is uh, quite removed from where we are, uh, speaking as a European, and then it infiltrated our lives uh, in the most devastating way. Uh, in a way, yeah, the, 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 if if you can talk about uh, a silver lining is that it made us all think that unless we act together, um, we are in for very, very big troubles uh, from now on. And of course, climate change is another, it's the major calamity and the next big crisis um, that is waiting, um, awaiting us around the corner. And again, it is teaching us that uh, we have to take collective action. It's not something that one person can solve. It's not uh, Oedipus's um, um, riddle to solve or uh, a politician's way to move forward. It's, it's a way for people to come together and make collective decisions. And I think that's what mm -hmm. makes contemporary tragedy um, in a way, diverge from um, the more ancient forms of it. Mm -hmm. And still adapting, if I understand right, in the Anthropos, the Tyrann Oedipus, um, Oedipus uh, is us realizing that he has been blind to what he has done to nature, the, you know, the rape, the killing, and how do you deal with that contemporary tragedy of an environmental uh, destruction, a devastation of a landscape, like in uh, Fukushima, we're going to have Aiko, the great dancer, uh, with us next week. We will talk about her repeated travels to that uh, landscape and how she engages with it. Um, Frank, you say um, that that's called, quoting Latour, the Gaia hypothesis, Gaia, the mother, the mother of all that Greek idea of it, um, um, is, at the, uh, it is at the center um, of... Uh, this and the planet Earth has to be the object of observation, the center of everything that should happen in the theater of Anthropocene. Um, um, so, how do you how do you connect uh, uh, um, that idea of a global view, which is a new one? You know that famous photograph the American astronauts took of planet Earth the most significant image of the 20th century, many say that kind of uh, a planetary view. How do you connect that in what you call the rudimentary organon for the theater of the Anthropocene with, right? How, where can theater come in and what does it need to do? Okay, there are many questions now. Um, <clears throat> the first point is I think that uh, now we are entering this uh, planetary age, yes? Because everything what we are doing now as a mankind is refers to the planet and his reactions to our actions. He's, he's answering, he's not dead anymore. In the 
uh, reading of the Bible of the nature is the uh, it's um, it's a not non-speaking material. Yes, but it's not a non-speaking material anymore, and therefore it's like in the old Greek ancient time uh, that the um, Gaia, the planet, the nature is respondering. And now um, we have to learn to articulate uh, what we want, but to react, to see what is the reaction. And we see some things are, uh, some actions of mankind are not possible anymore. So uh, in this uh, framework, Michel Serre says, um, okay, uh, the nature is behaving like a subject. Yeah, there is now a subject. Okay, and then we say, okay, we have subjects on this on the stage, but these are always uh, humans. Yeah, there's theater is something between humans and humans, and therefore uh, we cannot bring it on the stage. But that, then I say, okay, well, I was thinking about um, what is the beginning of theater? Yes, and. This beginning of theater in the uh, tra uh, tragedy and the origins before are um, dealing with nature. There are uh, dancing in the in the spring. Uh, Dionysus is someone who can change in an animal. Yes, he um, the the Dionysian ceremonies are in the springtime when the greening the god of the theater is a god. For the greening of the trees too, his responsibility, and he is dying. He's the only God who is dying because in the autumn the nature is dying. So we are with the theater very, very close at this planetary rhythm. The Dionysian yeah, is a planetary effect or express this planetary effect which is working year for year and not because uh, mankind is. Uh, doing some work and say, okay, nature, let's go. We have to work. Yeah? Nature does it. And mankind in the old theater times of tragedy is um, improving it with ceremonies on a symbolic field. So, and there we have a point we can connect now. We can say, okay, we have to think how we can this origins of theater bring in our global times. Yeah. Yeah. And you also uh, point out, you know, there's a shamanistic element, you know, in indigenous communities that actually did see their, uh, their, their, their individual life or the life of their tribe not could disconnect it from the plants or the animals. It is actually something very, um, very ancient. You quote, quote Levi Strauss, um, you know, who points out that if you bring out the deck, dead, the resurrection of the dead, that Heiner Müller vision of theater, that you, that they bring the dead out, but they also give something back to them. Yeah. Um, with this new age or with this step we have to do, uh, this has epistemic um, consequences. Yeah, this means when we um, see there is a forest and it's a resource, it's an object, uh, then we can deal with it, uh, cut the trees and sell them and so everything, what we are doing every day. But when we say, no, it's an effective power, it's a quasi subject like Lassur said, then we see, okay, this uh, impact of the forest uh, have an impact on the global climate and this uh, for the US, for, the, for China, for Europe, but it can be located in Arizona, uh, not in Arizona, in Amazonia, in Brasilia. Yeah. So we see it's an, the same thing. If you say it's an object or it's an effective power, is very, very different. And when we say it's an effective power or something like this quasi subject, it's like an amuse. Yeah. It's working, it has a soul, it's connected um, in an other way, like an object. So there is an epistemical uh, revolution now with this Anthropocene. And of course, this is for the philosophy of history, the same thing. We are not more in the history of progress. Uh, we are not in the end of the history. We are in an absolutely new history, which is not uh, following the logic of progress and the logic of the uh, 
um, last 100 or 200 years uh, with all these inventions. And we have to find out what what logic is uh, working now um, mm -hmm. and how we can um, have moral ideas because we have in Europe, as example, making all this um, diffusions in the air, but we have impact in Africa or in other parts of the world which have no eye industry. So these are new, now, now the connections between uh, different cultures in a very, um, how to say, not in a linear way. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm very impressed by that connection you also make with, in a way, resurrecting the dead. Is it as Hannah Muller said that we should get the dead out on stage and then they go back after the performance? The concern for the unborn, for the future life, and the planetary view um, that uh, is really something of significance and it is overriding, you know, personal ambitions. Uh, I think now, you know theaters putting out new plays, um, you know, to compete with others. There is, a, we are facing a most serious crisis and theater has to react. Avra, that's how also I read your book. You start, do ask the question, how does theater represent um, um, social and political transformation on stage? And what are the new forms and revised norms, you write, um, of artistic expression? You quote, you have Ostermeyer, I think, uh, Rabbi Murray. Tell me a little bit, where do you see it manifesting on stage? Well, I, uh, to respond to what Frank was saying about this different yeah. logic, I think there is something in progress not being linear, but becoming more of a cyclical thing and reconnecting us to the roots, which I think is also uh, in the heart of interpreting tradition, uh, but also looking... Um, to a way of taking future action. And I think that's very much what's happening in political theater, if you can call it political theater, yeah. a theater that carries a social and political consciousness today. It is, we, we often see that a lot of the new productions that deal with the political, the political experience or the experience of communities are actually based on um, uh, Greek tragedies. Um, and we see a lot of that in Rimini Protocol's work. Yeah. Uh, for example, I'm off the top of my head, Prometheus in Athens was this kind of project that brought 103 citizens of Athens on stage um, to talk about their experience of the Greek crisis at the time when it was staged. I think it was uh, 2010, so at the peak of the crisis. So um, there is a sense that we are both, um, we're balancing between um, the interpretation of history and tradition and um, revising the form uh, to lead us towards a new dramaturgy of the commons, a, a dramaturgy where uh, the audiences can participate, um, but also the, the, the experience on stage is asking questions rather than providing definitive answers. So we always seem to end with question marks. And I think that is a very different idea of dramaturgy than the one that used to prevail um, until, well, say, the end of the 20th century, um, where things came to, to an end. So it is a little bit, I think, um, uh, a way of connecting the Greeks with Beckett's understanding of cycle and cyclical time and time never ending and uh, things being perpetuated until we find that solution to make them uh, move forward. Um, but it is all about participation, I think, and it is about a different understanding of uh, time as something that is ongoing and something that is connecting past with present and future. I don't know if I'm exactly answering. It's, a, it's, a, it's something no, that I'm are, grappling yeah. with, but... Um, mm -hmm. um, you also yeah. wrote um, uh, that productions appear that are independent of the sources textual format, you say, um, uh, productions give rise to tragic experiences in a way that proves to be independent um, of, 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 of the story of the written 
uh, um, uh, uh, tragedy. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that uh, sometimes the text is a pretext and uh, what happens around the text and how um, the actors embody their own experience of loss becomes uh, more important than the words themselves. Um, in my chapter, I talk about uh, Borborygmus, uh, a project that really fascinated me when I watched it in Berlin in 2019 by Rabih Mrue and his collaborators, which is all about a collective experience of loss and devastation. Um, and it is based on um, the text that these three uh, creators, um, uh, Majdalani Rue and Kerbats, put together. But after the text, the experience of being connected to the sounds they made, the music they played, irrespective and aside from the, the words they spoke, became so resonant that um, uh, you didn't really care about the words as much, but you cared about these three people um, standing up front and sharing um, moments of extreme personal and um, political and historical and communal tragedy. So this is sort of the thing that I'm getting at, that it can no longer be about one person's story, that uh, different stories connect to, to make a collective history on stage, a history that concerns all of us. And it is a political statement, in fact. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a question, I think Carol Martin, she wrote about uh, Mila Rao, um, about La Reprise, I think, and she quotes Hannah Arendt and said, who said, tragedy requires sorrow, not anger. Uh, question to both of you, what is the, to what, what is the tone of what, how, what is the tone of the tragedies? How do they work in that idea of, uh, Frank, you also um, quote Brecht, you know, and said, you know, we have to learn from him. You very beginning of your essay, you talk about Galileo, that great play where science and theater is together, but now we have to also move on. How, how, how should a tragedy approach it? What do you think works? Now I can um, answer it with um, <clears throat> very, very right. Um, with Brecht, we have a scientific theater. Yes, this was his idea to make theater yeah. for scientific, the, the children of the scientific age or something. Uh, with mm -hmm. the Anthropocene, uh, we have the, a scientific theater too, but for the children of the side effects of the scientific age or something like this. So, and now we can see what is the difference and we have to explore this. And uh, there is now a connection between tragedy and science. And this is very mm -hmm. new for us because before, if we separate all these uh, problems, uh, the moods there and the knowledge, the scientific knowledge on the other side. And now we are in a situation to bring, to combine the two grammars of science and of art uh, or theater uh, to create a new form, a new construction of a scientific tragedy or something like this. Well, we have the both moments. We have uh, science, scientific thinking, and we are thinking in this uh, muse categories of this uh, what Latour is called uh, quasi subject. Yeah, it's like a subject. The Earth is like a subject. Of course, it's not really a subject. You can not phone him or phone the Earth or something like this. But uh, this is now um, the the challenge uh, for the artist to create this new language uh, for the humans on the one, one side. Uh, Avra said it's very nice about my text. It's uh, like the polis and the wilderness. And now we have the technosphere and um, the, the planet. And we have to, to bring it together that it don't exploding us. And then I wanted to, to talk another aspect, if I may. Um, we have now a new role, yes? A new role because before we was the actor, we was the kings of the earth, yes, two thousand years or whatever. But now we are not only the kings; we are Atlas, Atlas, 
Yes, this man who have to put the sky on his uh, shoulders because we are responsible for the um, balance of spheres now. And this is an absolutely new double role and we don't know in the moment how to uh, fulfill it yeah, and how we should shape it. Yeah? But mm -hmm. it's our <clears throat> time now. Mm. Um. Aber before you may also the follow-up question, how important is it that it happens at the Humboldt um, University? You know, uh, someone who also was maybe one of the first to say everything is connected to everything. Nature is a system. The invention of nature, some say go back to him. He created also the Urania and Theater der Wissenschaften, the theater for the science. Um, are you are you reconnecting to that uh, old uh, German idea? idea of the enlightenment of theater and uh, science. Um, how do you connect to Humboldt University? Yeah, I have some, some courses there and um, I will give le lectures, but I'm working together with some of the scientists. There are scientists networks and for the scientists, it's a very, very new situation. Yes, uh, I asked, some speaker of some network of scientists was uh, 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 an artist before me was here and speaking with so and he was thinking about this and then he said yeah there was uh, someone who was um, a theologue yeah and so also it was not really differentiating between um, an artist and other types of uh, interpreting in, uh, not scientific uh, viewpoints on the world. So it's um, there I have some some basement and of course it's very, very much easier if you want to make such a scientific theater, let's say in a new type uh, and you can work together with scientists uh, and you are uh, close to them um, when you are not when the theater is only uh, a free uh, stage in a, in a free uh, scene, uh, free of scene or something. Uh, so we get impact from the scientists, we give them impact and we try find out ways to collaborate. Yeah, There are, uh, in the first with Antje Boetje, she, she's very simple. She wants to, to tell the people what she knows, yes? She was something like, uh, we call it Wissenschaftsvermittlung uh, mm -hmm. to, to, um, to, to, yeah, to share, this, uh, share this information. Familiarization on science, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there are other scientists who want that the people are speaking about their themes, uh, it's example about the water. And then we have to um, invent, uh, new forms of theater uh, to communicate with the people uh, because mm -hmm. uh, science is not the, the solution, but it's a very, very important tool. And uh, we must, as a society, find the solution. Yes, uh, the science will us not give the solution, but science will us uh, say what will happen, what is possible, what is probably uh, happening mm -hmm. in the next 20 years. If we go this way, if we go this way. Yeah, we have to um, uh, adapt, or we 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 will perish. And um, the question is, how do we perform knowledge? How does knowledge feel like, and how does it feel like to perform knowledge? Um, Avra, you also direct. And coming back, what do? How do you feel? How do, how does this theater of the Anthropocene, where in a way we can locate also your work, this book, uh, you are part of that movement. Um, in your own work on others, what works? What do you think? Is it anger? Is it sorrow? Is it uh, logical Apollonian arguments? Is it Dionysian ecstasy? What, what do you feel? I think it's about connection um, and finding always a way to relate to everyone in the room um, including your collaborators, including obviously the audience, but also outside of the room, including the world and bringing the world in. So um, 
I think it's uh, we we can only. I mean, personally, I believe that the only way to make theater that is actually speaking to other people is to connect to um, to your thoughts and communicate your thoughts in ways that relate to other people's pain. So it's not about the isolated incident. It's not about your story. It's about um, everyone else. So what I think works is to also bring people from different disciplines together. I believe a lot in, um, you know, creating forms that borrow from science, that borrow from um, uh, technology, uh, because this is the world we live in. It feels that everything is experienced at the same time. Everything is about simultaneous experiences and consciousness. So um, you need to have all of that in the room with you, whether it is the visual arts and technology and text and, you know, uh, physicality coming together, uh, you really um, cannot leave certain aspects of life um, aside. And that's why theatre becomes more and more participatory um, in a way that um, it is not just, you know, um, having <clears throat> immersive uh, spectacles where you include necessarily the, the, the audiences in what you make, but you include different experiences that uh, have little to do with literature, as in text, have little to do with movement, but have everything to do with how we experience fragmentation in our daily lives. So, yes, uh, you know, observe the world and bring the world into um, the room and recreate this experience for your um, audiences and for your artists and the people you work with. Mm -hmm. uh, leave mm -hmm. nothing to chance and leave nothing outside. Include, I, I would say, that, that, that would be the word. Connect and include. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you quote Lehmann, Hans-Dies Lehmann, who said it's a, a tragedy is a figuration of transgression. And, um, and uh, it separates the possible from the impossible, you know. Um, um, how transgressive should it be? Um, I mean, we have rebellion, extinction, you know, the urgency, which you both are realizing in your work. How, how can it really be uh, uh, put on a stage? Uh, how, how does that still, does that work? What, what are you looking for? I think you're going to stage uh, Karen Malpe's work, who you also, um, the play you chose to include in the volume. Mm -hmm. um, why did you choose this? And how are you, how are you planning to stage it? Wow. Um, so the play is called Troy 2, and it is a pandemic play in, in the sense that it, it, it was written during the pand pandemic, but it also brought different forms of crisis together. It was about uh, the BLM movement. It was about uh, the pandemic. Uh, it, it, it was about what the uh, New York, but the world um, at large was experiencing uh, these past two years. Um, so yes, it's, it's a good question, Frank. I think I would like to bring the world into the play in some sense, because the play is based on or is inspired by uh, the Trojan women, the Euripides uh, tragedy. And it's in a very, very poetic way, it connects um, tradition um, and the lyricism and uh, the, the clarity of thought of the Greeks um, to the chaos, the experience of chaos that is very much prevalent in our times. Um, so it, 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 it plays with different discourses and different languages. We're going to use a lot of technology uh, to try and um, simulate the, 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 the sense of um, fragmentation that technology has brought to our lives. Um, but also um, the idea of speed that is very, very much um, at odds with how our n natural impulse to slow down and, and find that clarity that the Greeks were always um, looking for is about. Um, so uh, what, what we're going to try and do is connect those two worlds of the past, the remote past, and the knowledge and the wisdom that that past or interpreting that past can give us 
with the frenetic rhythm and the violence that we've been experiencing recently in politics, in, uh, in our um, you know, physical health situation, the violence that has been around us, and try to see if there is a way to, to find some enlightenment in this you know, bridging of the past with the present. I'm very mm. much looking forward to it. It is a question of, you know, uh, getting uh, the people together and uh, we're thinking of working with people from the community as well and not just professional actors, but working with students and working with um, uh, frontline medical uh, workers uh, just to see how, um, you know, the city is represented and approximate this idea of the demos um, that uh, was so uh, powerful um, and dominant in Greek tragedy. Mm -hmm. Wow, so the pool is the city mm -hmm. is part of the production, is part of the creation. So it's not just looking at it, it is uh, uh, and, and part of it. So in the, the local, you know, is a little bit more universal as is the, the, the global sphere. Frank, um, also a question for you. When you worked with Alexander Eisenach as a dramaturg for Anthropos to run Oedipus, um, what did you guys talk about? What was new? What was the difference if, let's say, you had done it with Heiner Müller 20 years ago or 30? Um, what is new? What you brought in from that idea of the theater of the um, Anthropocene? Tell us a bit about your work, your rehearsal yeah, work. There's uh, two points. One point is that I bring this uh, Antje Boetius, uh, this Arctic researcher, with me. And uh, I say to Alexander, OK, I will come when she's, uh, when you can put her on stage. So um, she was, she was, he was a little bit uh, surprised by this idea uh, between his uh, very good actors to have the science, science speak. And the other point is the viewpoint. You must know that Alexander Eisenach writes very much scenes. He's overwriting the old uh, text from Sophocles. And so we have, and he has many much talkings with us and with Fabricius, and he brings all this in his writings, yes? So there is a new type of um, text uh, which is not will not exist in this form without our talkings. Yeah. So, uh, but um, the question is, um, perhaps you want to to know or to ask um, how we deal with this um, themes with this old uh, tragedies. I don't know. Uh, I only can say we have a new viewpoint on this. And uh, we must understand that what we are talking about, and you're speaking about the deaths and Heiner Müller, and that, uh, as example, I bring a text from Gilgamesh in another um, production. Uh, and this Gilgamesh is five or 6,000 years old text material. And I have read it a uh, very long time ago. Heiner Müller don't read it. But uh, Robert Wilson make a play about it, something like this. The and, forest, yeah. Yeah, the forest, yes. <clears throat> Where I was actually in as an actor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, mm. great. Congratulations. Yeah. And um, I don't understand uh, this problem of Gilgamesh. They are, they are going to mm -hmm. kill the spirit of the forest, yes? This was mm -hmm. the story, Umbaba, the spirit of the mm -hmm. forest. And now, five or 6,000 years later in this connection of the Anthropocene, in this framework of the Anthropocene, this viewpoint, I understand, okay, there it starts, yeah? It starts, and there the, the people are talking about it and they are thinking about it. And now 6,000 years later, we are, we are speaking about the function of the forest and we have to, um, make campaigns to save the nature or an Amazonia or whatever. So this is that we see how the viewpoint changes on the history, on the material, on the text, and how it's very important for us to have this old roots, to understand our history and the history of mankind, how it navigates into this Anthropocene, because we don't want to have it, this Anthropocene, we want to navigate out, but 
probably we need five or 300 years. Yeah. And then I think, okay, this a theater or an art, which may be relevant, yeah, has to deal with the problems of the time. Yes, and it has to look in this um, abyss of the time. And this uh, Anthropocene is a very, uh, very threatening dystopian uh, challenge, yes, for everyone. And now theater has to think how we can uh, deal, uh, your questions, yes, how we can deal, and we must find it out, and we must find it out in a global conservation, uh, conversation. We don't can make it from our viewpoint alone. So I bring um, perhaps a Chinese singer in singing about a tree, or we have um, texts from Alexander von Humboldt, but from Jean Mouir, John Mouir, uh, who uh, makes us um, national reservoirs in this uh, Theodore Roosevelt. I not really know this. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so, so yeah. it's very important to, to bring it in a global framework of a global culture, uh, because we want not we have to change this culture, therefore we have to communicate. Yeah? You say the same uh, the thing that um, climate is not stopping at the borders, at the national borders, of course, yes? And therefore we need new ways of communication. We, uh, we are not one mankind, but we have the same problem <laughs> over the, uh, the planet Earth, yeah? And um, mm. we, cannot, we only can uh, solve it together, I think. Yes, yeah. this is a yeah. new situation, really new yeah. situation. And uh, we need very much um, construction, thinking, artistic research and inventions. Um, and we don't know the way, but we must find it. We must find it, yeah. And I think the corona shock is so great because we are living now in that a new age. Uh, it affected everyone globally, it was a shutdown globally. All theaters were closed, something that has never happened. And, um, and we have to find answers. Um, I, you also quote Bruno Latour um, and his significant work. Um, I like the Thomas Oberender project, uh, Down to Earth, which he named after this. You also mentioned that, well, they said, let's do outside productions, you know, uh, without electricity. How can we do uh, an exhibition or a play um, about our uh, of our catastrophic situation, but we have the air conditioning running and the electricity and the computers. So maybe this was one idea I thought is great. We are thinking about maybe doing something in New York City parks next summer to invite also such productions. But um, the real um, question is, you know, how can it be done? And there will be uh, lots of flowers, I guess, on the. Um, on, on the meadow that will be trying it. And, um, and as someone, uh, I think, and Catania mentioned in her book, she said, I like the idea of springs, of, of birds flying in early spring, you know, that there will be lots of approaches. Abra, you collected 20 voices. I know we dedicated a lot of time to you guys, but you guys are here and Brecht said, built the house with the stones you have. And I thought that was important, of course, to have you here. But um, maybe give us a little, um, a little um, insight. What are the other um, uh, contributions you thought they are so significant? I would like to include them in my book. Thank you, Frank. Uh, uh, I'm very, very pleased to do so. If you can allow me to read from my notes, just to make uh, to do justice to all the chapters, yes. I will be very brief. Yeah. But uh, okay. I don't want to leave anybody out. All right. So yes. some chapters. Um, analyze the theoretical underpinnings of crisis as reflected in the subject matter of 21st century plays. Uh, the volume opens by um, Jana Merzon's tragedy and crisis, staying for, uh, staging forced displacement and its reluctant hero, which explores the theatrical devices that theater uses to approximate the reality of forced displacement off stage to the one evoked as fiction or otherwise on stage. Ana Fernandez Caparos in her essay. And this is just to say she has any Baker in there, right? And Lynn Nottage, two writers. Um, yeah, well, the, so. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 I mean, the, the one I'm going to discuss, uh, Jana uses uh, three examples of uh, uh, plays. Mm -hmm. But that's and, fine, yeah, uh, yeah. Fiction, but that's, yes. Yeah. Uh, 
but um, so Ana Fernandez Caparros in her essay, Tragic and Post-Tragic Representations of Precarity in 21st Century U.S. Drama, Fractured Togetherness in Lynn Nottage's Sweat and Annie Baker's The Flick, uses the notion of precarity which conceptualizes a novel condition stemming from a distinctive phase of capitalist development associated with neoliberalism to examine two major Pulitzer Prize winning American plays that summon workers' lives onto the stage and engage with precarity in different ways. Costantina Ziropoulou, a colleague from Greece, um, delves into some of the prevailing themes and formal aspects of contemporary Greek dramaturgy. Her chapter is entitled How Many More Thousands of Years, Dystopia, Otherness and the Greek Crisis in the Work of Three Contemporary Greek Dramatists. Um, this work uh, covers a wide range of topics linked to the Greek crisis, such as unemployment and the dire working conditions, the large inflow of refugees followed by outbursts of nationalism, poverty and social inequalities, violence and state, um, state corruption. There is um, uh, a wonderful chapter, Modern African Drama in Crisis, Two African Authors in Search of Identity, by three co-authors, Taihu Afolabi, Stephen Ogenruro, Okpadach, and Ogag Mark One, which engages the notion of crisis to explore ways in which contemporary um, 21st century African playwrights are grappling with prevailing ontological realities on the continent. The essay argues uh, that one preoccupation of theatre of crisis is a continuous question around identity, power and finding voices to speak out within neoliberal realities. Um, now, two of the book's essays trace how popular plays of the dramatic canon are renegotiated through the lens of crisis. Um, one of them um, is Living the World Good or Living a Better World by Aldo Milochnic, which analyzes Brecht's response to the social and economic crisis during the transition from the 1920s to the 1930s, uh, concentrating on St. John of the Stockyards, and then uh, focuses on a potential post-Brechtian response to the, presence, um, to the present, a time which is defined by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as economic, uh, ecological and global uh, disasters. Silvia Bilacci's Caesar Must Not Die, Italian political Caesars in the New Millennium, discusses the possible ways for um, Italian theatre to approach the topic of Caesar and Caesarism via Shakespeare in the new millennium when a widespread right-wing resurgence once again raises questions of hegemonic crisis, collective forms of intolerance and a need for strong authoritarian leadership. Other academic essays elaborate on the work of directors and theatre ensembles for whom crisis is not just the prevalent thematic concern but is also compositionally present in the mise-en-scene. In Prophets Needed, Five Easy Pieces and La Reprise Histoire de, uh, du Théâtre by Milo Rao, Carol Martin discusses how Swiss director Milo Rao's modern tragedies reject the offstage violence and heroic protagonists with faded outcomes typical of Greek tragedy. Rao revisits tragedies um, rising tensions, climax, catharsis, unified plot and resolution, but unlike Aristotle's tragic hero of noble character, his tragic protagonists, uh, argues um, Martin, are common men and women enmeshed in a tragic mythos with endless mutations. And there is no suspension of disbelief, no catharsis. Um, treating Milorao's work from a different perspective, um, Freddy de Cruz's um, uh, chapter, theater remains traditionalist and Eurocentric about Milo Rao's theater of crisis, examines the principles upon which Rao's political activism is based, while asking why Rao succeeds in giving new meaning to the tragic climate that hangs over recent times. I've spoken a little bit about my uh, and he, chapter. Uh, chapter. He has this term of global realism, right? Which is very yes. interesting that he said what is, is emerging is a global global realism, you know, Carol Martin's idea of the theater of the real, but this kind of idea of a global realism, Milo just staged in Switzerland, I think, the, uh, another, just this week, you know, another yes. trial against the Swiss com company exploiting Congo and 
a huge data lack that um, was world, world news, you know, came yes. into it. But uh, go on, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so I talked a little bit about my chapter, uh, Beyond Suffering or Resolution, Tragedy in the 21st Century Collective Experience, which reads forms of theatre practice through the lens of modern tragedy, both evoking and reformulating the Aristotelian sense of tragic. Uh, my chapter draws on uh, Thomas Ostermeyer's production of Edouard Louis' uh, History of Violence and on Borborygmus that I talked about by mm -hmm. Rabih Mroë. And it looks at modern tragedy as a performative form that reveals the, quote, apprehension of a common human vulnerability, and this is quoting, obviously, Judith uh, Butler, and stimulates an awareness of the social and ideological context that aggrandizes it. The volume's emphasis on theatre-making processes that articulate major uh, global calamities from within and on the performance of crisis as an experience in which the audience can partake, I talked a little bit about that, is made manifest in the discussion of contemporary performances of protest and resistance, which may be indebted to tragedy. In Marca España, making theatre from precarity, state violence and fiesta, Ana Contreras analyzes the aesthetic paradigms regarding themes, forms and artistic processes that emerged in Spain after the 15M revolt of 2011 and sets out to relate an overview of Spanish theatre in the last decade from feminist, decolonial and anti-capitalist perspectives and a geopolitical delocalized position. In theatre is assembly, radical dramaturgy in theatre commons, Uchino Tadashi introduces Florian Malzacher's notion of theatre as assembly and then goes on to look into an alternative Japanese form um, of this concept in which after a complete neoliberalization and depoliticization of the cultural sphere, the other, the more humane kind of exploration has been emerging. Now, um, I have to say that I'm really, really uh, indebted to all our international collaborators because they brought this um, a global perspective to um, the volume. And we have uh, people from um, Lebanon to China, um, Germany, Venezuela, Spain, Greece, the United States, uh, both academics and artists that came together to, to, to give us, you know, their own perception of how the world feels um, in their part of the right, world. No. And it, in yeah. a way, it is also, you know, what, what uh, Frank writes about, the, the planetary view, what you also have the there planetary in that view. book. It's a planetary view, as our Siegel talks, in a way, we're a planetary view, you know, on on, on, the, on, the, on the state of the world, the Weltzustand, I, you know. I, as, uh, I, I was actually quite uh, inspired mm -hmm. by the talks, and uh, believe it or not, they did help me formulate the structure of the book in oh, a significant um, way, so thank you. Thank you. But uh, I will say that um, a little bit about our artists' uh, collaborators. Mm -hmm. um, and I will start with uh, Hanan Haj Ali, who is an award-winning activist from Lebanon. Um, in Cards of Identities, Poetic Luxury, she uses a first-person narrative perspective to illuminate profound issues of um, national and political identity that continue to challenge artists and citizens of a country uh, severely affected by manifold and prolonged crises. In uh, a different chapter, IV of a country's living history, Lupe Gerenbeck, an author and director from Venezuela, poetically right. traces the way in which her engagement with the theater communities in her native Caracas has consistently addressed some of the country's relentless social and political predicaments. So again, there is a very strong um, yeah. uh, coming together of politics with um, yeah. the Yeah, she was at the Siegel voice. Center. Oh, yeah, we once had her as a guest. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is an interview that I had the joy of conducting with Daniel Wetzel, uh, founding member of Rimini Protocol, that interrogates the interweaving of the artistic with the political. Wetzel elaborates on socially and politically minded work that often enters the public sphere and celebrates an openly agonistic agenda, manifesting notably participatory, immersive and, uh, of course, documentary practices. Um, in Chorus and Crisis in the Contemporary United States, Peter Campbell discusses three of his recent works that address the political potential of contemporary choruses as they both embrace and reject the virtuality of the masses 
that dominate our mediated world. And he looks at contemporary crises of collective voice and the diminishing of a politically viable contemporary polis. Anestis Azas, a theatre practitioner from Greece, and Suk Xiao Gang, a Beijing-based actor and director, talk us through the challenges of creating theatre during the COVID-19 pandemic in Theatre in COVID Times, a report from Greece, and all is related to me, respectively. Following a visionary approach, Miguel Rojo and Javier Hernando um, of the Spanish ensemble Los Barbaros have compiled a list of imaginary plays that could help us process the anxiety and loss incurred as a result of the pandemic in an essay entitled Plays, parenthesis, we didn't do to survive a worldwide uh, crisis. Um, of course, Frank's um, chapter uh, that brings to the fore the crisis of the environment uh, has been, I hope, adequately um, analyzed here. And finally, uh, the collection's farewell piece and the poignant nod to the future of humanity um, is uh, Karen Malpid's original short pandemic play, Troy 2, that I also talked about, which um, illustrates the interconnectedness of modern crisis, COVID, climate and racism. And this is what the book is about. And of course, I put everything into a very uh, concise form, but it is beautiful to um, to see how all these people who were suffering at the time when the book was being created um, uh, gave their unique voice um, and really um, walked us through different very different forms of crisis that all felt totally connected in the end. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful to everybody who took part in this. Yeah. No, it's a fantastic uh, and uh, resource and also a document and archive of the time that Planetary View also Milo Rao put out that Y theater where he asked theater artists around the world to write statements. Um, it is a, a big, a big uh, work ahead. Um, uh, Frank, a question for you. Are you hopeful uh, that theater will have that impact or do you think it will be on the streets manifestation? Is it people, as Camus said, sitting at home, reading a book? Will it be film industry? How, what, what, do you think theater is um, um, uh, at, at the center of that sort of movement or is it part of, part of it? It's a part in each case, and uh, but I, I I think there is a, a possibility uh, that it can be very powerful, Ex uh, especially in Germany, where theater has this uh, much um, big houses and much money. So, but. We have first must uh, develop new forms, which are in another way theater, which we don't uh, can uh, see to today. There is uh, the idea to make theater in the landscape and uh, to um, connect in another way with nature. I think it's very important. What is the, the task of the theater? Yeah. Uh, when we look at animals, at plants, at everything in the nature, we think, okay, this is the reality of nature. But uh, we know that if we are in an ancient time, we will look in another way on a river because there is a god of the river. And then if we are Christian people, we look there and there we know there is no god in this river. and. Um, when we look with the um, views, with the eyes of René Descartes or some others, uh, we think, okay, we, how we can change this river to make it productive. And now when we look uh, with the eyes of the Anthropocene, we see, okay, this is very difficult with this river. Tomorrow it can kill us or uh, he's full of poison, whatever. So I want to say uh, behind our viewpoints, there are many, many history decisions and we must, must put them on the surface. We must understand that we, in a way, um, cultural relatives 
uh, this is a relativity and that there is no in this sense reality but there is many um, sediments of culture history and theater has to bring it out to bring it on the surface so that we that is like a theory of alienation yes that uh, Brecht say okay what we think what is normal what is naturally in 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 reality it's historical and we must bring this historical um, attitude to nature on the stage that we understand mm -hmm. ourselves better and then we can better um, navigate or make decisions yeah 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 and, and we, we... That's in, that we says nature is absolutely um, artistic because in the nature is not one complete thing it's a, always a process of many many decisions in the nature too and developments and of course in our cultural history it's the same thing and we must uh, try to bring it together or we will fail we will fail yeah and perhaps it is a hope that that theater can play a new role perhaps gain additional meaning it had lost perhaps in the pop culture of the significance compared to television film um, and uh, and music uh, uh, and I think it's perhaps a way back door as Kleist said you know the way back into paradise there might be a door open and and that theater can help us to at least see it experiencing and to experience it I remember us talking about Humboldt and theater and Goethe that uh, Humboldt and Goethe were friends and I think before Humboldt went on his long three or four year Latin American journey where he then wrote his entire life about and he also I think had a had a planetary view, you know, he wrote about the cosmos as well as about the plants and the beetles and everything. And, uh, and Goethe said to him, and uh, you can list up all the stones with Latin names in alphabets and put them in boxes. You can, you know, give names to all the plants you find and dry them and bring the leaves. People will not understand what nature will be in Chile, where he thought it was the, the he thought Latin America was the, the, the center of the earth. He said, people will not do it. You will have to describe the sunset or the sunrise, your view on the forest. And, and, and Humboldt became the first travel journalist in a way and invented that idea of nature. And I think theater may also be something that connects uh, that scientific uh, discoveries and the, the real of the world um, but in a way that um, uh, mankind uh, will understand, connect it, feel it, and um, and uh, perhaps that is also um, what is missing. I really would like to 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 thank both of you. Yeah, please. And he discovered by this, he discovered the principle, the principle now of the Anthropocene, because he said everything is uh, connected to everything, and that's now exactly our problem now yes, that we don't can separate the spheres and uh, yeah. the landscapes and everything. So we must learn with this systematic view or a systemic view uh, to describe our reality. Yeah, and uh, there has to be a symbiosis or there will be a death, as you quoted, Michel Serres. And I think that is a very serious crisis. And I think also we all in the theater have to acknowledge that and we have to confront this terrible, terrifying, tragic state um, of the world and we have to bring it on the stage and communicate yeah, it. Because this is uh, how you say, it's very heavy uh, stuff, heavy themes, and we need a, a place for this heavy themes. This is not in the pop, pop culture or in the TV, uh, this is not a TV stuff. This is really... Uh, mm -hmm tragedy, pathos, hubris, everything, but we are dealing about our future and the future of our children. And this is uh, a, a very, very uh, difficult situation for the whole uh, mankind of the globus. And so we have to deal with it in a new way to handle it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think uh, as artists and theorists of theatre, we have to learn to uh, prepare ourselves and prepare our readers, uh, our audiences uh, to transform 
ourselves and themselves. We have to be open for this transformation uh, that the new theatre will allow in order to move forward. Because yes, this is very heavy stuff and this is, uh, these are very difficult and dangerous times we live in. And we must uh, make a point of changing uh, because honestly, uh, that's the only way forward. Yeah, yeah. It is really, really interesting. Also, Heiner Müller said, uh, using Brecht <clears throat> without criticizing him or putting it in a new form is treason. Um, I think also theater people have said now producing theater without having that kind of uh, galactic global uh, uh, view um, is treason to, um, to the great basic idea of what art and civilization um, has been or should be and uh, we have to engage with it and also interpret the classics in a way that is respectful um, to this new uh, shocking realization of the Anthropocene age, which we entered. And I, I agree, and I think we have to relook at it. And this little way out, the Dionysius reloaded, as uh, Frank said, you know, there is, um, you know, something that we have to, to um, um, adapt to. We're going to have Aiko, the Japanese dancer who's based in New York, who created that book, A Body in Fukushima with us, where she will deal, she's dealing with a result perhaps of that Apollonial, more, more theoretical age. For 800 years or a thousand years, that landscape will be contaminated. Um, people will not be able to get in. And she went into the demarcation line where you could go in or not, the deserted railroad stations, the stores, the streets where the grass is coming and where the concrete is blooming. Um, and um, and so we will also see the the seriousness of, again of this. We had fantastic uh, 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 writers with that Bonnie Maranka, uh, Teresa Smalik on Ron Water, Alexis Green with Emily Mann, Perry, Carrie Perloff on and Catania, uh, great workers in the theater who perhaps in this Holocene age, in the golden age of theater, created work for for decades um, um, and, and interpreted this theater as it was needed for the time, but now we have that new age coming in. And that was, I thought this book is so important as highlighting this. And Abra was also a Siegel Center scholar though we knew each other. So um, I think it's a, a important um, um, a comment and should be taken serious also as the concept of it um, itself. So um, thank you both uh, to our readers. I hope you have to listeners. We have time for uh, next Monday, December 20th, to join us with Aiko, who is in Japan. She actually flew to Japan and sits still in a hotel room. I think it's 14 days of quarantine before she can uh, come out and she will talk about her, her work. Her little Asa is a beautiful writing about that, um, that, that shock, uh, that Fukushima catastrophe. And I think also Richard Schechner said here in the program, quoting a friend that what we are looking at now at the time of Corona, a nuclear reactor explosion, but the roof is off. We look at inside in real time and, um, and we have to react and we have to prepare us as Afro said, and also our audiences and future generations of it. And we have a, a responsibility as theater artists. So thank you both. Thanks to HowlRound for hosting us. At Avra, I apologize. It's impossible to get it all in from your book. And Frank, your center alone, your uh, initiative is, is worth uh, three talks. And I hope maybe there will be ways of collaborating or bringing you over here once it's possible. Um, it's easier. Um, we still don't know if we will have public programs next spring. It looked yes, but now... Uh, um, we are very worried. Cornell University, uh, 900 students got infected just two days ago or three days ago. They're going to close down the entire campus. So we don't know um, what really um, 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 will happen. But um, I'm proud that we are part of that uh, uh, global uh, sphere and that we exchanged and our ideas. It's very important to hear from you and uh, to howl around. Thanks to BJ and to uh, Thea for hosting us and to our listeners uh, who stuck, stuck with us. And also, you know, was listening to the, to the, all the contributors and their names and what they wrote about it is important. And, um, and if there's ever a time in the time of Corona, perhaps we listen a little bit more so we can hear, hear better. Thank you all. And um, uh, thanks again to uh, everybody who tuned in. And one day we'll all see each other, uh, Frank and Avra and over a cup of coffee, uh, uh, um, right. a lunch and uh, keep <laughs> us and things in mind. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Stay Thank safe. Thank you so much. Stay Bye. safe. Bye-bye.